Hello and welcome to showcasing my entire football shirt collection, 2021 edition. Yes, so this is by far and away my most requested video. Everyone always asks me to do an updated video showcasing my collection, but I wanted to wait until I could do it at a very special location. And a huge thanks to Peterborough United for letting us film at the Western Home Stadium today. It's exciting to be here, uh, the stadium's empty. It's just me, I could do anything except go on the pitch. It's not allowed. I have filmed a video or two with them over on their YouTube channel, so be sure to check it out in the description and subscribe to there to see them videos when they do go live. The way this works is I break down my collection into different leagues and then we'll showcase them each in a different segment. I've also saved my favorite shirts till the end. The collection's over 200 shirts large now, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long one. Sit back and get some popcorn. For the very end segment, obviously these are the shirts that I love most. I do love every shirt I have, just some a bit more than others. Also on this note, there is inevitably gonna be a few that I have just forgot to bring with me because they'll either be in the wash or they're hiding somewhere in the house. Basically our house is just football shirts at this point, so I, we can't expect them all to show up at one. Finally, before we get into this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to hit 150,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I think it's doable. We're just over 140,000 now. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't. It's completely free and helps me out massively. Also, can we smash through 2,000 likes in this video? It's one I get asked to do so often, so I'd appreciate if we can hit that like target. Anyway, let's get into showcasing the collection, starting with a section that I like to call the miscellaneous section. As you can see on screen, this is a section made up of clubs that aren't really specific to a league that I'm specifically collecting. For example, we've got MLS sides on there, we've got J-League sides on there. We've got random template shirts. Those of you that are eagle-eyed viewers and have watched quite a few of the videos, you'll see that quite a few of these have been obtained through getting mystery boxes or right ask clubs for free shirts. There's some amazing shirts in this section. Let's talk about some of them in a bit more detail. Starting off is this Tokyo Verde shirt. I've spoke about it quite a lot on the channel before. I just think it's such a nice, clean looking shirt. I think it's one of the best J-League shirts of all time. You can get this with different sponsors on there. Um, there's, I believe there's a slightly more iconic Coca-Cola sponsor option, but for me, just how insane the shirt is, I love it. Next up is my Arsenal Bruce Banana shirt. Those of you who follow me on social media and have been around the channel for a while will be aware that I actually think this shirt is pretty overrated, but my granddad actually managed to get one of his friends who used to collect football shirts to just give it to him. He's an Arsenal fan. It's original Bruce Banana one of the most sought after shirts of all time. And it's, it's the second shirt I'm talking about in this video. Stay, stay tuned, this gets, oh, this day took me about eight hours to prepare for. It's some England shorts. I honestly, I have zero idea why I've got these. There's gonna be quite a few brand new in the bag items throughout this video. We've got this uh, Manchester Man City collab one that Puma um, really kindly sent out to me. Um, I'm not a collector of like Premier League shirts specifically, but people, as you've seen when we just recorded across there, people often say that Ellis gives away or sells the shirts he gets for free. I don't, most of them are there. <laughs> On this note, actually, we've got this Man City shirt from last season that Puma also sent out to me and I ranked it really highly because I think it's just, it, it is a fantastic shirt. And on the Puma note again, they sent me out Man City's home shirt from this season, um, brand new in the box. They sent me this really cool box, which is like 93-20 feel, themed around obviously Aguero's goal. I love receiving shirts in boxes. It's gonna be really useful for me like in the future when I want a really sleek backdrop with loads of boxes. And um, it's a very nice box. The shirt's in there too. That's what you're here for, but box is nice. Brand new in the bag, Gremio away shirt from last season, Eminem Direct Special. This is actually a shirt I get quite a few questions about. It is the New York Red Bulls pre-match Americana shirt. For those of you who don't know, there was a pre-match Americana thing. Let's see, is a cat being slaughtered? Loads of teams for Americana in the MLS two seasons ago all had these pre-match shirts. Um, they're quite highly sought after. I don't know if anyone has the full collection, but I've got one. Oh, well done. We've got this Domingos Dorado shirt that was kindly sent out to me. Obviously, the story behind this is, this is the club that Diego Maradona managed. Um, obviously, rest in peace, one of the best footballers of all time. This club are now synonymous with him for Maradona's stint in Mexico, where 
he managed this side. This Ajax shirt has just stayed with me for so long now. I always say in these videos, I bought it because I thought I needed it to show that I'm, I'm a shirt collector, so. Oh, Ajax shirt. Oh, that, I'm so sorry. The only reason, I, I like it, but the only reason I own this shirt is because I wanted people to take me seriously as a shirt collector when I first started. Then I realized no one takes me seriously. Live with it. <laughs> and the final shirt I want to talk about in this section is the infamous Norwich bird shirt. I've talked about it quite a few times in different collection videos. Um, this shirt means a lot to me. It was the one that I would always see my granddad doing the gardening in when I was younger. Um, he had it, he kept it in mean condition because I know he'll be watching it. He takes better care of things than I do, but I've kept it in mean condition as well. Um, it has a lot of just sentimental value to me, to be honest. I remember seeing it when I was younger. There's photos of my granddad when he was younger wearing it. Um, just a shirt that means quite a lot to me. And I love it. He's even he's got the Premier League badge on there. Raymond doesn't cut costs. Anyway, enough from that section. Time to move on to La Liga. Um, but this section kind of looks a bit like a shrine of my, my undying affection towards a certain man, Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Yeah, so this section is maybe, well, depending on how you see it, is maybe my most underwhelming section. You've got quite a few Messi shirts. This one is obviously one of the most desirable Messi shirts. It's his rookie seasons, um, he bought the number 30. Famously now, he's doing it at PSG as well. It's a really great Barcelona shirt. Um, obviously, to have it with Messi 30 on the back is one of my favourite shirts in my collection. Not favourite enough to be in the final section, mind, but... I love it, it's such a great shirt. Obviously we've got different shirts throughout Messi's career. I've been quite vocal that I wanna try and collect every shirt that he's worn in his career. It's getting a bit difficult now, obviously he's left Barca, the prices of Messi shirts have just skyrocketed. I'm not, not really someone who gets involved with FOMO too often. Um, so that really isn't for me at the moment. In terms of shirts I wanna showcase, we've obviously got this one that I've got in the Nike mystery box, the Barcelona pre-match shirt from this season. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Nike stuff, especially pre-match for most clubs they do, is a... Shut the what was that? <laughs> We've got this Real Betis shirt, which is a father under Eminem Direct Special. Got this brand Nuremberg Villarreal rain jacket still. Those of you who have been here for a while will remember the first video where I gave Jody money to buy me shirts. She got me this jacket. Or was it that video? Or was it the deal or no deal one? Basically a, a video where Jody bought the shirts for me. We, this one. We've got the, the Barcelona 99 OO shirt. I don't know what, I was supposed to say something then, weren't I? <laughs> this one is a really cool one. It's a player issue Fernando Torres shirt from his return season back to Atletico. It's really cool having a player spec shirt. Um, obviously, wasn't issued to him for a game, but you know what I mean, like a, um, like a full player spec shirt. For a game. It's not a full player spec, Alice. Why are you waffling? There's no badges on there. It's, um, it's, uh, People come to me to learn about shirts. Just look at, isn't this shirt pretty? The final one I want to talk about in this section is a Real Madrid Zidane shirt, which is obviously not that amazing. Clearly it's the Zidane um, name set is fading on the back, but as you can see on the front, on the screen in more detail, there is a signature on there. Um, and I've never been able to verify exactly who the signature is. Um, I've Googled a few Zidane signatures and it kind of looks like it might be. It could be a Zidane signature on there. It was never sent with a certificate of authenticity or anything, so it's very hard for me to say, but it could be a shirt signed by Zidane, so that's a really nice one. Anyway, moving on to the Bundesliga section. As you can see on screen, it's quite another section that's heavily focused on one club or person. Uh, very Dortmund-centered, this section is, but we do have a few nice ones from other clubs. For example, we've got the Bayern Human Race shirt here, which is, is one of my more my more favourites. It's one of the better shirts in this section in my opinion. I think the human race stuff last season really did divide opinion. There's people who are very staunch on football kits and being like, they shouldn't be fashionable. The reality is they are and we're going to see more stuff like this in the future and personally, I welcome it. In terms of ones I want to talk about in a bit more detail, for those of you that haven't realised yet, the ones on the overlays, they are in my collection. I just we, we've seen them all, uh, we've seen them all so many times. We don't need to talk about them all in detail. We've got this one, right? So those of you that saw the recent video of Jody will be aware that I got a shirt with this template. Talk about that later in the video. But I thought it was cool that I have a template as well that is 
an original Ipswich template in the yellow Dortmund colours too. Another one we need to talk about in a bit more detail is this Schalke shirt. I got it in a Bundesliga mystery box. At the time it caused a bit of a stir on the channel because I said that I'd like to get it in the box and then I did and people went like, oh that means it's scripted. No, I just, I happened to say something and it came true. Mystic Meg, Mystic Egg when I was bald. <laughs> but it is a really nice shirt. I've just realized there's some dirt on it. If I just got dirt on this shirt? Oh, Ellis. Oh, vanish oxy action, please. Next up is this Stuttgart Pride goalkeeper shirt. It is one of the shirts of last season, without a doubt. You guys can see it on screen in some more detail. I loved both the Pride shirts that Stuttgart bought out. At the time when it released, I was kind of trying to cut back on how much I spent on shirts. And to be honest, I'm continuing to do so. I'm really happy with my collection. Um, but there's, I'm obviously gonna add loads of shirts still. But it was a case of I only wanted one of the two. Kind of wish I bought both because the outfield shirt is also amazing. If Borussia Dortmund are gonna release a special edition kit, I'm gonna wanna buy it. And so is everyone else. It is the Null 90 EN shirt from last season with Dortmund, with Haaland on the back. The thing is with this shirt is right, they released it as limited edition originally, then it was on sale for like a week or so, and they've only just started shipping orders still. When this video goes out, people still haven't received theirs. People bought this shirt thinking it would be a collector's item. The reality is, and I'm sorry this is quite a sobering thought, they would probably have sold more of this than their home shirt. I mean, that, that may be a bit of a stretch, but they're gonna have sold so many of these. They're gonna be so common, they're not an investment piece. They're just a nice shirt. I still have my Borussia Mönchengladbach blackout shirt. I know I said when I was hunting for the Dortmund shirt, I would try and sell it, but then I, I didn't sell it and it was up for 50 quid. People have offered me like 150 quid for this since, but I did say in that video, I've decided I wanted to keep it anyway. So it's kind of fortunate it didn't sell. So for those of you that want to know, it's, it's not for sale, sorry. And then the final shirt I want to talk about in more detail in this section is this Dortmund 90s training top, leisure top, whatever you want to call it. It is amazing. It's a shame that, as you can see on screen, the badge isn't centralized fully, um, but it's an amazing out there design. I paid £150 for it, I think, at the time. That was a bit too much. Shout out to the seller for, for ripping me off. <laughs> I thought it might be worth that. It just, I doubt it. Anyway, moving on to Leeds and FC Porto. This is a section that I'm gonna go through quite quickly. It's a section that obviously holds a lot to me due to the fact that I'm a Leeds United and an FC Porto fan. If we get away with no one commenting about that, it'll be the first time ever. As you can see on screen overlaid, I have got quite a few shirts um, from both of them uh, because obviously they're the clubs I support the most, so they're the shirts I wear most often. Um, I also have a pair. <laughs> Leeds United 03 shorts. They come in handy in the bedroom. <laughs> We've got this season's Porto home shirt, brand new and bag as well. I haven't unbagged it yet. I'll unbag it when I actually get a chance to go to Porto and watch a game, because then logically I'll wear it then. Speaking of stuff still in the bag, we've got the Leeds United home shirt from 1992, brand new in the bag still. Um, this is one of my favorite things currently in the Leeds section for sure. Amazing, it's still brand new in the original bag, the original Admiral bag as well. I can't imagine that's very common. Another one that those of you who've watched the channel for a bit and watched most of the content will have seen by now it is my Leeds United goalkeeper shirt from the 90s. So it's just, it's amazing. I still haven't removed wood one from the back. I do need to get around to doing that. Um, but other than that, it is, it's one of, it's probably my favorite Leeds shirt that I own that I can wear anyway. There's a, there's a few more, there's obviously some better ones that we'll, we'll get to. We've got last season's home shirt, our first year in the Premier League. Realistically, I started supporting in 03 04, so this was the first full season I had as a fan of us being in the Premier League. It's got Bamford on the back. He's definitely, like last season, the season he had, and the, the way he's progressed under Bielsa, finally, I, I don't think you can pin it all on Bielsa. Obviously, he was a great talent anyway, um, but just seeing the striker he is now is just, what a player. And the final one to talk about in this section is FC Porto's 97, 98 away shirt, the Penta season, the fifth successive title win. It is one of the most iconic football shirts of all time, I'd say at this point. People love the fact it's got the dragon design on it. I love it too, I think it's a fantastic shirt. Obviously there is more shirts from Porto and Leeds when we get to my favorites at the end, but for now, that's it with the Porto and Leeds section. Time to move on to 
Syria. So why I can't say that without sounding like Syria. I'm not moving to Syria. We're moving on to Syria. Ah, couch away. So this next section is Syria, and as you can see, as we're getting further into this, the collections are becoming a bit more expansive. As you can see on screen, there's loads of here that I'd love to have spoke about in more detail. I've actually got about seven or eight here I want to talk about in more detail. There's some on there, even still, that I would love to talk about. You've got the Juventus pink shirt made famous by Drake. You've got the R9 Inter shirt on there. You've got the Venezia shirt people love. Both this season's Inter Milan shirts have got sponsors on there that people love. We've even got a uh, Palermo Dybala shirt on there that just hasn't made the cut to talk about in some more detail. But here are the ones I do want to talk about. First of all, and this is a good, people always say to me, Ellis, how do you store your shirts? I just bought some Ziploc bags and some silica gel packs and then I store them in there and they seem to keep their condition pretty well. It's the uh, Napoli special edition Maradona shirt. I don't, I spent 120 pound on that. People have been getting them from classic football shirts in their sale for 55, so. Let's move on. Got a brand new and bag Roma shirt. I didn't want to debag it because I'm not going to wear it. Um, so, moving on. This one is a holy grail for some people. It is the Lazio shirt from the debut season of Gaza being there. Obviously, Paul Gascoigne in England, I think we're always going to talk about him and this shirt will always forever be synonymous with him. Such a shame that it didn't particularly work out with Lazio due to injuries and obviously he just needed someone, if only, I think about, when I think about Gasco and I think if only he would have went to Man U, maybe he would have had people there that would have put their arm around him rather than, you know, they would have looked out for him. The shirt's nice too. I've got the Fiorentina 99-00 home shirt. This is a shirt that has actually started to go for just outrageous prices, like unreasonably high prices. I've always seen this one as more of, if you can't get the Nintendo sponsor one, you settle for this one. Um, people are going to disagree with me on that. I just don't think it's as good as the two the seasons before. Still nice though. Also got last season's Juventus third shirt with Ronaldo on the back. Still in the bag. We got it in a mystery box. I'm not going to debag it because you guys have seen it so many times. One of the most sought after modern shirts that there is to be honest is this and then there's a Roma shirt and even the Inter Milan 1819 away shirt is also really hard to get. It is their 1819 third shirt. One of the I think this is the shirt, it dropped at such a great time. It's when football shirts and fashion really began to just go bang. Um, and this shirt, for that reason, is incredibly sought after still. DH Gate is still making fakes of it because it's that popular. Um, I have a real one. Don't buy fakes, kids. Don't buy fakes. And on that note, actually, of shirts that are really hard to get still, we have this Roma third shirt from two seasons ago, I believe. It's sold out everywhere. You literally, you won't even be able to find it on eBay or anywhere like that unless you want to pay ridiculous prices for it. I've seen them be listed for 200 before. Mine still has the tags on it. Uh, it's one of them where it is my size, but I don't know if I could ever just bring myself to detag it at this point because you're probably knocking about 80 pounds. As soon as I detag it, it loses like 80 quid in value. And I know it's not about the value of the shirts, but I literally would just be slipping. I don't, I have enough shirts to wear. I don't need to wear this one the sake of losing money on it. The second from last one I want to talk about is I was very vocal about the fact that I love the Juventus Palace Skateboards collaboration. Once again, as I said earlier in one of the earlier sections, people are very marmite on whether they like the fashion lifestyle collaborations. I do. It's the Juventus Palace goalkeeper shirt. It's just, it is lovely. That's fine. Oh, thank you very much. No worries. Thank you, you sure? No, no worries. No, thanks. I've kindly been given a uh, a Peterborough shirt as well by a very kind man over there. Thank you very much. Lovely. And the final shirt I want to talk about in the Serie A section is of course my Napoli Marcelo Ballon limited edition shirt from last season. There's only a thousand of these made. As you can see, I've got number 755 out of a thousand. I did get the goalkeeper shirt as well, but those of you who saw the hunting for the Dortmund blackout shirt video will know that I sold that to fund the blackout shirt. So. Anyway, onto the League 1 section. I always find it weird with this because my morals kind of conflict in a football sense. As a football fan, I don't like clubs like PSG and what they do for the game and the current status in. But from like a fashion sense, the kits are amazing, as you can see from this collection. Um, you can see it on screen, there's quite a big chunk of PSG shirts there. And obviously the ones we're going to talk about in more detail are PSG. We've got the first PSG Jordan shirt actually just behind me there, the, the first one they ever had. That shirt, by the way, fun fact, has been in the tumble dryer maybe about 50 times 
before I collected shirts and knew about how to store them properly. Still going, absolute trooper. We've got the, the Marseille rainbow kit up there. I love that one as well. And we've got another Marseille shirt there. We'll talk about a different variation of that later in the video. For now, let's talk about some in more detail. So obviously speaking of PSG, fun fact, this is the first or second like big shirt purchase I ever made. This was just before lockdown, I believe, or maybe just in lockdown. I spent £45 on this. There's no, there's no chance you're ever getting this shirt for £45 now. Um, so back then it was a big shirt purchase. Then obviously lockdown happened and prices skyrocketed and everything. Um, someone started making videos on how to get cheap shirts and then made them less cheap for everyone. Some knob. But I love this shirt. It's the shirt I wore most throughout lockdown as well. And it's, it's now in storage because it's a bit too big for me at the moment. Um, but it won't be one day. Next up, we've got this Leon shirt, which is, by the way, considered one of the best shirts of the, the turn of the century. It's that loved. But did you know, fun fact, I know I've said this before, it's sponsored by Everest Poker, and the des design of the shirt is supposed to be a casino floor. So that shirt everyone loves, you're seeing it overlaid on screen right now, that pattern is supposed to be the floor of a casino. It's not, not as nice now. Stop it! <laughs> PSG's 0607 Louis Vuitton inspired shirt. Um, I say Louis Vuitton inspired because people sometimes say PSG X Louis Vuitton. It's not. It's it's just inspired by Louis Vuitton. I do wonder one day when eventually there's going to be a PSG Louis Vuitton shirt. There's going there's going to have to be a collab at some point. Surely it's the way that football's going. People are going to be throwing their beers at the screen right now, hating me for that. But I I personally see a PSG Louis Vuitton official collab one day for like £800 a shirt, and it will sell out instantly. People hate it, but they, they sell out instantly, these collaborations do. And that one will as well. They could sell that shirt for a grand. People will be buying it instantly. People. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking in terms of holy grails. It is arguably one of the most sought after PSG shirts of all time. And rightfully so, I, I would love it in long sleeve. Obviously I currently don't. I've just got the short sleeve variation of it. Um, but let's just look at the design on screen. It just screams 90s. You've got the Commodore sponsor on there, which is obviously iconic, now defunct. Um, but Commodore is very nostalgic for quite a few people. Not for me, I was still in... in... <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I was in progress. And this is one you don't see very often. It is a PSG long sleever, 90s. I love this. I know Dortmund shared the same thing. It's, um, amazing the design sponsorless because it's the european version i believe it's still brand new with tags it is look at me look at me being smart it's still got the official nike premier tag on there i purchased this from classic football shirts it's one of them that i'm never going to detag but i love it so much it's such an amazing shirt even back then they said to you machine wash no more at 30 than 30 degrees cents celsius so why do people still do it now? So this international section is a bit weird. Uh, as you can see on screen, you're gonna be seeing it for quite a while. It's by far and away the section where I have the most shirts, arguably other than the next one, which is jackets and sweats. Um, and the shirts that I don't love, obviously, I wouldn't be showcasing and whatnot. Um, so I do love all of these shirts. It's just a case of, you could argue it's the section with the most filler. And um, it's because I just, uh, I obviously collect international shirts because they're not club specific and they're, they're, I just love the international shirts and you're being able to see that on the screen. I'm waffling a lot because it's gonna, I'm aware it might take a while to show all of them. So maybe I'll stop talking and put some music to it if it's still going. <laughs> on to the ones I want to talk about. We have quite a few brand new and bag ones. We've got the England home shirt from the Euros, which Jody got me. We've got the Denmark um, reissue shirt, which Hummel did. He actually remade the Denmark retro shirt, which is great because that shirt, as we'll see in a second, is so, the 1988 shirt is just ridiculously expensive. It's so rare. So the fact that Hummel are doing official re-releases, you may as well just pick one of them up. And some more brand new in the bag stuff. People are gonna moan at me for this. I haven't opened these because Puma sent these out to me during the Euros and obviously everything was very hectic then. Sent me out um, the Austria shirt, the Switzerland shirt, a Iceland shirt, obviously didn't qualify sadly, the Czech Republic shirt, 
another Iceland shirt. And they did also send me out the Italy shirt. Then the international shirts I want to talk about in more detail. We've got this first one, which is obviously, those of you who remember that mystery box I did before the Euros. Um, can, we, can we zoom in on how bad the Gaza signature is? That's so funny. <laughs> I, I don't love this shirt. I just, what, what am I supposed to do with it? No one's going to buy it. We've of course got one of the most sought after football shirts of all time. It is the Soviet Union shirt that they never actually wore. Um, so I don't understand how it's so common and I'm, I'm never going to understand. And all, any of the shirts in this period are made in different places. Like for example, mine was made in Lithuania. <laughs> oh no, Lujbanya. Is that Slovenia? Lithuania? We've got the current Norway away shirt uh, with Haaland's name set on there. Brand new with tags. I'm going to be keeping this one in the bag because let's be honest, it needs to go up in value to make up for the fact I spent like 100 on it originally when Nike then put it on sale for around £37. <laughs> This one's a really cool one. It is one um, my good friend Aston Oxbury gave to me for my 17th birthday. From It's an official match-worn shirt from when he was at the England camp um, at youth level. Um, he's currently, he's been unlucky of injuries now on loan at Barnet, was in the National League South team of the season, um, the season before with Wealdstone. Um, and then hopefully, I think the name Aston Oxbury is a name that you're going to hear, even whether you've heard it now. Uh, but like in terms of, he will be, a very well thought of goalkeeper in a season or two. He is now, but I mean like in terms of more people are going to hear his name. You know what I mean? We've got this Brazil shirt, which I'll be honest, I get terrified every time I touch. It's the Brazil shirt with the Zico number on the back. And this is such a cool one. Like Zico, one of the best players of all time. Can't say I ever really got to see him play, but I have a shirt, like an official shirt with an official Zico number on there. They don't come round often. Here we go then, here is my original Denmark 1988 shirt. I love this shirt, I mean, as you can see, it has been refurbished, the, the badge has been put back on there and the Hummel sponsor, I believe, was restored. But this shirt is an original, it's the original base shirt. Um, as you can see by the tag, sponsor for the Danish national football team. It's just that the, the badge needed a bit of a repair and the bottom of the shirt is a bit damaged. But for me to be able to say I have an original of that shirt is just, like I said, once again, not many people can say that. It's a very rare shirt. Next up, we've got the Mexico 1997 home shirt. This Aztec design is considered one of the greatest football shirts of all time. Made more famous from the 1998. It is basically the same shirt, just other than the, the sleeves are a bit different on this one. Um, I love it. I think it's great. Times anyway to move on to the jackets and sweats one, which this day, it's been, we've been in a while and this next section might break me because I probably have about 800. <laughs> Hello, you're probably wondering why I'm back here. The truth is the jackets and the sweatshirt section is so long that I couldn't find anywhere logically to do it in the stadium. So we'll go back to the stadium in the dressing room to showcase my favorite shirts in my collection. But in the meantime, here is a montage of some of the jackets and shirts I don't want to talk about in loads of detail, but I love all of these. Enjoy. <laughs>
that's what I think of your selection. Next up, you've seen from that montage, I have this Bayern sweatshirt and the other variation of it. I've also got a Rangers Adidas sweatshirt from the 90s as well. I just love this so much. I love all the Rangers Adidas stuff from the 90s. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. I wish I could talk about and wear this item without people assuming it was some sort of political statement. I just, I think it looks amazing. Those of you that saw the Nike mystery box will know how much I loved getting this item sent out to us. It is this PSG jacket. It's going to be made famous for Messi training in it, Pochettino wearing it, and Ellis Platten wearing it too. <laughs> Those who saw the football shirt hunting when I went to BK's for the first time will know I picked up this Barcelona Maber jacket, which I believe is Maradona era. It's just, yeah, oh, you see it on screen. It's just lovely. It is. An amazing piece for the collection and this is why people always say to me Ellis like where do you find jackets and sweatshirts they're so much less common than the shirts like this wouldn't have been sold anywhere near as much as the shirt was so the sweats and the jackets are by far and away my favorite pieces because some of these items um, the one we talked about at the very end I've never seen another of so obviously there's been loads of that Barca jacket ignore that but like, even some of them ones in that montage they don't come up often at all. I don't know how to suggest getting them. eBay, Depop and Grailed are my go-to. I've just made it harder for myself. Not them sites. I go to Tesco Direct. Another mystery box special is this Barcelona Kappa jacket from the era with Bobby Robson and Jose Mourinho in their coaching staff. And uh, do I need to say much more than that? It's saucy. This Porto sweatshirt, someone DM'd me about it and they were like, Alice, have you seen this listed on this random like vintage clothing site? I was like, no. It's 50 quid. It's at least player issue to Derley in the season we won the Europa League. Um, because as you can see on screen, it's got the 11 and the, like, it was never, you couldn't buy it in a shop as a fan with the numbering on it. So it's at very least player issued, um, but logically maybe player worn. I don't know how these items end up how do random player items get into just random vintage sites? And it's always handy when they have no idea what's on their hands. But once again, this is another item I've never seen another one listed anywhere. Another one I've never seen listed anywhere is this Argentina sweatshirt. We couldn't find out the exact year. It's some year between 1988 and 1992. It is incredible. It is amazing. As soon as I saw it, I was like, shut up and take my money. Now then, those of you that follow me on social media will know that this item was my holy grail for so long. We've got one more to talk about afterwards. But I took so long trying to find this. And finally, we've got this FC Porto Kappa sweatshirt. It is insane. Look at it. Oh my god. Oh, it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's a, it's a large, so it, it fits me very large, which is a shame. Saving it for the next time I go out to Porto. I'm going to try and put on a bit of weight before we go out there. Just so I, I don't look like it's drowning me. <laughs> and the final item in the jackets and sweatshirts section. You all knew it was coming. This and a few of the other ones really should have been in my favourite items section. But this time I wanted to make it just shirts. Because the title says shirts. And to be honest, the jackets and sweats maybe could have been a video in itself. But of course it's my Fiorentina 7-Up player issue jacket. Because... It is ridiculous. That is all I can say about it. It is completely and utterly ridiculous. I don't think I can pull it off, but that doesn't matter. Looking at it on screen right now, it is just, it's insane. That's all I can say about it. It is genuinely insane. Anyway, back to Ellis in the changing rooms to talk about my favorite shirts of all time, or in my collection. My favorite ones in my collection. So back at the Western Home Stadium, Peterborough have kindly let me use the home dressing room to showcase the best shirts, the section that I'm guessing most of you were here for, although I imagine a lot of you also came for the sweatshirt section as well. I'm gonna talk about around about 20 shirts here, my favorite ones in my collection and why I love them. Starting off with the FC Porto 97, 98 home shirt in long sleeve. I love the kappa down the sleeves. I've spoke about this so many times, it's just a shame it's an XL because 
There's absolutely no way I can fit in that anymore. It's gonna drown me. Next up is this Gambro Saka player issue shirt. I, I mean, I don't, it's not like, I actually would prefer it because of this player issue. Like, I'm, I, I logically can't wear it again. I think we'll find that a lot with this section, actually. There's, there's shirts that I love, but in terms of whether I can actually physically wear them, I don't, I don't imagine I'll ever wear this because, like I said, it's player spec. It's not that common to come by, especially in long sleeve. The mascot's cool, though. Next up, we have the Barcelona 11-12 away shirt with Messi on the back. I just think, I don't think there's, I've ever seen a season of football from a footballer that, from a footballer, well, it's not going to be from football anyone else, um, that has been as impressive as Messi was that season. He was just, I don't think we're ever going to see anything like it again, personally. Like, I probably scored like 90 goals in all competitions or something ridiculous like that. And the shirt is great as well. And it's one that I think in about 10, 15 years time, people are going to be like, that's the shirt I want. And I've got it now. Unlucky. So this next one is maybe one of the rarest ones I have. It is the Dortmund 1988 home shirt. Any shirt from the 1988 with this template, like the Holland, any of them, we'll talk about them in a bit more detail as well, are so hard to come by. And also it is genuinely insane that Jody of all people managed to find it and buy it. I just, I, I don't think anyone clicked that video expecting to see this shirt. I, I certainly didn't. And the fact that we've got it, the fact that it's got the number on the back as well, I can't find online who was Dortmund's number eight that season, so if anyone could let me know. I know they weren't great, I think they finished like eighth, but even still it is. It's such an iconic, rare shirt that, yeah, it's obviously gonna be my favorite section. And then we have this one, which had a video dedicated to it. It is the Dortmund blackout shirt. I think it became one of the most desirable shirts of like the 2010s easily, because it caused such a stir when it came out. Managed to get it with Royce on the back as well, who is arguably one of Dortmund's most iconic players of all time. I don't think if I looked again, I'd be able to find on Rib Royce in the back. Obviously it cost me a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. It's one of them, it's like one of the jewels of my collection, I think. I think this is one of the ones that people look and they're like, I wish I had that one. And, I, and once again, I, ca I can't wear it. What if I spill like tikka masala down it? What am I supposed to do then? This next two are two that I've spoke about quite often on the channel as well. We've got the Barca 1213 home shirt. Once again, with Messi on the back. I think it's arguably one of the nicest Barca shirts of all time. I just think the center like separation with the colors works really well. And obviously having him on the back makes it even more special. And then the next one is another shirt. This is probably the shirt I've had the most questions about ever. It is the Hertha Berlin special edition um, shirt because it's got the bear on the front. It's quite literally the only reason people love it. It's also the reason I love it. I managed to pick it up for like 35 quid on their website in a sale and then it's just never gone on sale anywhere else again. Like, so yeah, it is a very sought after, lovely shirt. This shirt's pretty special to the channel. Obviously, we were the first YouTubers to ever work with Inter Milan. I say work, I know I always say work, they didn't pay us. They just said we can go behind the scenes and make a video with them, and we did. And I got this shirt gifted from them with Lotaro Martinez on the back. And also, he did sign it for me, but as you'll see on screen when we go a bit closer up to the shirt, the sign, I got so excited that he'd done it. And then I folded the shirt straight away and it is smudged. But there is video proof of him signing it for me. It's just, <laughs> it's such a mess. One of the most sought after England shirts of all time. We're gonna, I feel like I'm using the word sought after quite a lot here. It is our Italia 90 third shirt that was never actually worn in Italia 90, only in a friendly beforehand. Most famous for the World in Motion music video. And yeah, it's nice. So obviously I know I mentioned the 1988 shirts. This one was so nice that we made a video dedicated to searching for it. And since I made that video, I think a lot of people have realized the value in them because they're, they're a lot more common on the market at the moment, it seems. I've seen several go on the market going for outrageous prices too, because it is, it is a very valuable shirt. I do like it, I think it's great. I love the fact that I got it with Van Basten on the back as well. Like it's not exactly a commonplace thing to find. I think the only downside for mine is that the, the collar and the neckline, it just, you could fit two of my heads in there and I've got a large head as it is. This shirt's pretty special to me because it was the first time I got to interview a footballer. I say the first time, it's the only time I've got to interview a footballer. Uh, hopefully not because my performance was so bad. It was when I got to interview Alex Telesh for a, um, an FC Porto New Balance event and Alex Telesh signed a shirt and it gave me a hug as well. I don't think he had any idea who I am or why I was there, but he signed a shirt for me. And 
I'll forever have that. And this shirt has been in the backdrop of my videos since I lived in the studio flat. It is the Fiorentina 92-93 home shirt. Player issue, I was told it was match worn, so very potentially might be match worn, with obviously the number on the back. It is just the 7UP logo being so big on there. Looks amazing. Like You don't see football shirts like that anymore. It was there to, let me just showcase, it was there overlaid on an older sponsor. Um, which fell through, so 7UP came in at the last minute. And as you can see, you've got the old sponsor there as well. So, uh, it's, a, it's an, um, yeah, I'm lost for words. Staying on the track of the Holland 1988, we have this one, which people still call a bit of a unicorn shirt. Holland have never been proven to wear a blue shirt. There isn't actually any proof they wore a blue version of this template. But there's quite a few in circulation, which doesn't make any sense. Why would there be so many Holland ones in circulation and just, no one else, so no one, if anyone has any info about this shirt and why there is a blue version of the Holland, that it can't, to me it can't just be this a template because it's too common, it's rare, but it's too common, it's like the Holland, it's about as common as the, as the home, maybe a bit rarer, but it, it, it's common enough that something has to be, there has to be a story about it, so could someone, if you do know anything, let me know. This Club America 93-94 shirt was a shirt that I also had on my top 10 shirts of all time list. I do love it. I think ideally I'd have had the one with the bigger badge. As you can see on screen, there's two variations of it. There's this one and there's one with the badge, which is much bigger. I think it looks better with the large badge. I do love the shirt though. Obviously the Coca-Cola sponsor on there is great as well. It's a, it's a 90s shirt. It's very 90s. And uh, just the amount of people who are going to be saying to me, oh, Alice, we've seen some of these. And what do you expect in a video showcasing my entire collection? There's going to be shirts from my collection that you've seen before. Also, just sorry, Alfie, editing this. This must take you so long. So sorry. <laughs> this next one is another Palermo Dybala shirt. The issue with this one is, well, not the issue, the intriguing thing about it is, um, as you can see with the sponsor, and you can see on the close-up as well on screen, this shirt was only ever worn in a pre-season friendly and it was never on sale with the, um, the Keep Calm Matuta Al Barbera sponsor on it. So my thinking is it had to be at least player issued and it's very tight, it's, in a, it's a medium, but if it's very tight, I don't know if anyone could have any more information about it. People said maybe someone could have makeshifted and put the sponsor on themselves, but it just it, it's not a DIY job on there. Like it definitely has been Printed. I don't know whether maybe they went on a brief sale or something, but maybe a player issued Dybala shirt or match worn. We will never know. Unless Paolo's watching this, then let me know, Paolo. This one obviously is one that we got in the League and Mystery Box. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm one of like three people in the world to own it with the Africa badge on there. Like it wasn't commercially available at all, um, this shirt with the uh, um, Olympic Marseille Africa badge on there. So it's very special. And like I said, it's, I think two other people got sent one. So it's literally me and two other people have this shirt. Any offers, send me thousands and you can have it. Is this next one a bit shameless that it's one of my favorite shirts is the one I made? Yes, definitely. The biggest yes I have ever given anybody. I think it's three yeses. Um, I didn't make it, I didn't design it. I sold it, I put my badge on it, but it's great and also, We've got the other away day shirt as well. This, this season's one, I believe, in my opinion, is nicer than the first one we did. I think it looks more clean. It looks more like a genuine football shirt. But the first one we did is, is still special to me as well because it's the first bit of merch I think I ever sold. And you guys loved it. So what a shirt. Not a Crystal Palace shirt. People are, oh, you copied Crystal Palace. I didn't design it. Not on me. These next two, you can see them both in shot right now. They were originally my two favorite shirts I owned. Before we talk about another two at the very end, you can probably guess which two they're gonna be at the end. But for now, we've got the Rangers 95 home shirt. If I got the year wrong in any of these, it's been a long day. <laughs> but this, this Adidas logo up there, I think the neck works so well. If it didn't cause such a stir to wear a Rangers shirt or a Celtic shirt, then I think I'd wear it all the time. But I think people assume you're making some sort of political statement when you wear them, but I just love the shirt so much. I love anything with the Adidas neckline up there. I just think it works so ridiculously well and I, I love that shirt so much. And then this Fiorentina shirt was my holy grail for a while. Shame I never got it with Batistuta on the back. It is their 97, 98 home shirt. I think this is the greatest Fiorentina shirt of all time with the Nintendo sponsor on there as well. 
I just think it's, it's, it can't be topped, I don't think. I don't think it will ever be topped. And for that reason, it is, it is in my top three favorite shirts I own. I mean, the final two, they, nothing I ever get, well maybe, but unless I get a match-worn Messi shirt, or a match, it's a match-worn, the next to a match-worn is what I'm trying to say. Let's look at them. And these final two are the Leeds shirts from last season, which were gifted to me by Aaron Ramsdale, both match-worn. There is a Bamford and a Phillips shirt. It's, it's fine with these ones as well, because I can officially say they're match-worn. There's no stress on these ones. They're genuinely match-worn. Aaron Ramsdale got them from the fixtures against Leeds. And the fact it's Bamford and it's Phillips, like the two players that could have been, like, you know what I mean, like insane that have got them from my first season in the Premier League. A Bamford shirt and a Phillips shirt worn against Sheffield United. And we beat them both times we played them as well. So neither of them scored, but it doesn't matter. Lovely. <laughs> I thought I'd talk about two special edition shirts as well. We've got the AIK special edition from last season, where only apparently under 250 of them were ever made. I still don't believe that. I think more were made, but it is an amazing shirt. And yeah, I'm, I've kept it with the tags on, but the more I look at it, the more I actually do want to wear it. And also in terms of special edition, we got the Iniesta Infinity shirt from his last game at the Camp Nou. They did a special edition shirt to where they just turned the eight sideways and just said Iniesta Infinity. I think he's the greatest midfielder. Him and Xavi are the greatest midfielders I've seen and probably will ever see. So to have a special edition shirt from celebrating his last game at the club is amazing. Yes, guys, we're back here. You might be wondering, Ellis, why didn't you do the outro at the stadium? The real reason is we only have one house key. I told Jody I'd be back by three. She was stuck outside the house for an hour and a half because I had the house key. I had to rush home. I was in the dog house. I ordered a Chinese or was forgotten. But anyway, that has been showcasing my entire collection for 2021. Everyone always asks for it. A massive thanks to Peterborough United for letting us film at the stadium. I felt like it made, hopefully it's made the video great. Hopefully you guys have really enjoyed it. Hopefully some of you have managed to get to this far in the video because if you have, well done. It's, I'm sure it's been a long old watch. It was a long old day to film it. Be sure to check out Peterborough's channel in the description. Once again, a huge thanks to them for letting us film. Can we smash through 2,000 likes in this video? It's going to be interesting to see where the collection goes in 2022. I think I'm less bullish on buying shirts now. And just, I have a few in mind. Messi! <laughs> but for now, it's going to look even... My collection will look much different next year, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. I've been Ellis. Be sure to subscribe for more football shirt content and more away days. Ciao, ciao. Bye.